let's talk about how to diagnose your liver by using your foot. Of course, we're not actually diagnosing the liver. You have to go to the doctor for that. But you can get a lot of clues by looking at certain parts of the body, especially the foot, to be able to understand what's going on on the inside versus taking every one of these clues and treating them directly with a different medication or a skin cream or maybe even a diuretic because you have edema. So today I'm going to kind of really connect the dots with a lot of different symptoms that relate to the foot. So let's start off with these red and brown spots in the lower part of your leg. You probably have seen that with people with diabetes, which they usually have liver problems. But if someone has like cirrhosis or hepatitis or even a severe fatty liver, a lot of times the circulation is so bad in the lower part of their body, you'll see these little red and like kind of a rust color, brown, maybe sometimes scaly uh, little dots or pigments that looks a little bit like a bruising. So the liver has a lot to do with the clotting factors, uh, vitamin K. And when you lose the liver function, you can have a lot of uh, things like bruising and discolored uh, spots in different parts of your body. And you'll also notice that the lower leg is very swollen and shiny, and there's no hair growth anymore. And you probably also notice that the skin is very thin, almost like paper thin. And that's partly because of the swollen nature of the fluid retention, as well as the poor circulation to feed the hairs and the appropriate amount of uh, protein that your liver is supposed to make to allow this collagen to form in your skin. A lot of times you also see pitting edema. So you press your finger into the lower leg and it leaves a dent. I mean, I'm 58 years old right now. When I was in my 30s, I had a bit of pitting edema. And I look back, I'm like, wow, I had no idea that my liver was pretty bad back then. And now I have zero edema. You can press in my lower ankle. There's no more pitting edema. So I do want to say the liver is one of the only organs that has the potential to completely regenerate if you get it in time. It's not always about a liver transplant. You can do something about it. And then we also have um, some spider veins, not just in the lower ankle, but it could be anywhere in the body. So this is a certain situation where the liver is no longer able to regulate estrogen. So we have this unregulated excessive amount of estrogen that floats around in the body and estrogen tends to vasodilate and kind of create this uh, vascular pooling effect of your blood. And the problem with having this extra estrogen is that extra estrogen can then damage the liver and create things like even a fatty liver and problems with your bile ducts, which could lead to um, gallstones. This is why uh, when a woman is pregnant, um, they're more susceptible to getting gallstones because of the higher level of estrogen that can occur. Same thing goes with birth control pills. Okay, what about dry cracked heels or just dry feet in general? That is usually a very severe omega-3 deficiency because the liver makes bile and bile helps you break down and absorb fat-soluble vitamins as well as fat-soluble nutrients like the omega-3 fatty acids that you would get if you're going to eat like salmon or sardines. So bile helps break down those fats so then you can actually absorb the omega-3 and get the benefit. But with poor liver function, we don't produce the amount of bile that we need to help to extract the omega-3 fatty acids. It can also be a vitamin B3 deficiency, which could lead to pellagra that's more rare. But you usually see that where people are just eating the majority of their calories from corn, corn chips, corn tortillas, because corn is very deficient in B3 and that can create more of a problem with that. But typically, if it's in the heel area or the foot, think omega-3 fatty acids. Now, you can also have itching feet. This usually exists because that bile that's produced by the liver is very, very thickened in like sludge and it's backing up into the liver and then it's backing into the blood and then from the blood, it backs into the tissues and that can show up as itching, okay? And I know some people that have this unbearable itching feet drives them crazy all night long, but they're not making the connection. The problem is probably not in the foot, it's in the liver, but it can also be a fungus growing on the foot. Uh, people with liver problems have more fungal infections, not just on the foot, but on the toenail as well. Why? Because a really big part of the function of your liver is immunity. There are certain cells in your liver that are immune cells. You can almost think of the liver 
as kind of like a lymphatic uh, tissue with these small little lymph nodes that are like little sinuses all over because it has to deal with all the stuff coming through the blood as well as through digestion. So it's kind of a hub of the immune system. And so when that goes down and you lose that function, then you get this overgrowth of candida, fungus, not just in your body, but outside the body as well, as well as giving you a symptom of more inflammation because the big part of your immune system is to counter inflammation. And so there's a huge correlation between bad, sick liver and arthritis, especially if it's like an infectious arthritis because there's some type of pathogen floating around that kind of gets lodged into your joints. It could be in the ankle, it could be in the toe, it can be in the knee, any joint. And that arthritis is coming because your immune system is not working to be able to get rid of the pathogen. So we lose this immune control. And then we have this excessive immune reaction that creates a lot of collateral damage, like inflammation in your knee, because the immune system is like a bowl in a china shop, just basically destroying everything in its vicinity. So in that case, it's like your own immune system that's creating the problem because it's not able to kill the pathogen. You know, quite a few people who have plantar fasciitis, this pain in the bottom of the foot, you know, they get it treated, it doesn't seem to work. It's not really coming from damage in the area itself. A lot of times it's referred from your liver because you have a tendency to have more arthritis or inflammation, especially in areas that you're constantly irritating, like your foot, where you constantly have to walk on it. It creates a lot of inflammation. So in the morning, it might be better, but at night, your feet are killing you. Now, because of the poor circulation and the lack of uh, blood flow and things, you, you're going to have a tendency to have buildup of toxic material, and it's going to have bad odor, and it'll come to the skin. It could be like a a bad uh, ammonia smell. And also the temperature is not regulated. So you may uh, notice that your feet are more hot than they should be. So at night, you can't have a blanket on your foot. But on the flip side, with some people that have liver damage, they have cold feet, okay? And that's probably because the thyroid needs to convert at least 80% of its hormones through the liver from T4 to T3, the active form of the thyroid hormone. So if there's liver problems and you can't make that conversion, you end up on the cold side. So too cold, too hot could be liver issues. Now, what about fungus on your toenail and in between the toes, right? Where it becomes so red and irritated and painful that people put all sorts of creams and antibiotics on it yet it keeps coming back and back and back. Why? Because you haven't got rid of the root problem. You haven't healed the liver so the immune system can work. Instead, we treat symptoms, add another antibiotic, antifungal, and you're better for a while until it comes right back. Until you develop this fungal resistant strain now that you can't even kill it. Now, also realize for any type of systemic or topical fungal problems, you can't use an antibiotic cream or an antibiotic. Antibiotics only kill bacteria, not fungus. And as a side note, there's a lot of natural things that I have on the internet uh, that are antifungal and they're natural and they don't have side effects. Iodine is one of them. Tea tree oil is another one. Now, a really good clue for liver problems, if the toenail is really healthy, chances are your liver is very healthy. And there's a lot of different problems that can happen with that toenail. Number one, you can have something called a dystrophic nail which is a nail that's very thick, it's cracking, it's distorted, it's yellow. Sometimes it breaks off from the nail bed. It can be very uncomfortable with just a little bit of uh, force. And the person kind of stubs her toe and then the nail just starts breaking off. So that's one situation. You have another situation where you have a toenail fungus. That's called onchomycosis. Not that you need to know that, but the nail bed just starts to break down because there's this fungus invading, and there's a bit of a yellow coloring, but that fungus is living off of your protein, the, the collagen in your nail. And this is not just athlete's foot. This is not just you know having your foot in a moist environment. It really has to do with your own immune defenses internally that's making it very, very weak, making you susceptible to getting uh, a fungus. And then you have other types of nail problems. I'm not going to even try to pronounce these, but white lines that go across or little dots 
or vertical ridges that go up and down. Both of those situations can be a liver problem. Also having a club nail could be a liver problem. And in that situation, it's kind of an upside down spoon. So you have this kind of a squarish, very large kind of a bulbish nail that's occurring on your foot or it could be in the hand. So as you can see, there's a lot of little clues that you can get by looking at someone's foot. Of course, if you're doing this in public on someone's foot, don't mention my name. A couple little points. Liver is a major immune organ. Number two, the gut floor imbalance. If there's any type of imbalance in your good bacteria, that can make the liver worse. There's this huge, uh, it's called a gut uh, liver axis. It's a two-way a street situation where the gut and the liver are under constant communication. So one problem can create another, and then the liver problem can create problems with your gut. And this is why when someone takes antibiotics, they end up with liver problems. And this is also why some people that are exposed to a lot of chronic artificial sweeteners, right? They're taking a lot of this over a period of time. The synthetic artificial sweeteners, uh, a lot of times develop problems in the gut, which then can create liver problems and even insulin resistance issues and metabolic syndrome. In fact, there's a condition called rosacea where the person has this like red cheeks and sometimes a red nose. And of course, if you look this up, they don't know what causes it, but it could be related to um, an imbalance with your microbiome. Because if you have a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, bacteria in your small intestine, and you get an antibiotic to kill it off, a lot of times that clears up in your face. Well, this makes a lot of sense because when you have this imbalance of microbes in your gut, what do you think that's going to do to an imbalance with microbes on the surface of your skin? The main type of treatments for rosacea mostly involve uh, topical and internal antibiotics. So it must have something to do with the microbes, either internally or externally. The point is that if you're going to treat something like that with an antibiotic, what happens when you destroy all these microbes and then the problem just comes right back? Yet you keep doing this. This is, again, just treating the symptom, but not the root cause. One last point, um, one of the first signs of liver damage really shows up in your skin. And uh, probably the reason why it would show up in your foot is because the foot gets the least blood flow. And so problems show up probably more commonly than in other places. Now the question is, what are the best foods to reverse liver damage? Okay, for that information, you should check this video up right here.